Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today we are going to continue for industrial instrumentation for chapter 3. Okay, so the title is Principle and Operation of Signal Conditioning. Okay, by now from chapter 1 to 2, you should already cover the first component of a control system, which is the, uh, uh, the input or sensors and also covered in the chapter 2. Okay, so from the signal of the sensor, it will go to the controller and this is where your circuit will need to process that raw data before uh, going into the controller. So meaning uh, the output from the sensor that you have from the chapter 2 before it can actually go to your controller or your, your microcontroller. Okay, the signal need to be processed first. Okay, so that process is called signal conditioning, right? Okay, for the end of this chapter, okay, you should be able to first the, know the principles of analog signal conditioning and then know the bridges and op -amp applications and then signal filtering and grounding and lastly, digital signal conditioning. So we are going to cover all of this in four different uh, videos, right? Right, the first is uh, the objective is principles of analog signal conditioning. Okay, so we are going to cover the analog first, right? Okay, for introduction, the output from the sensor of a measurement system has generally to be processed to make it suitable for next stage of operation. So remember, output from the sensor is the raw data that you have for your circuit. So you need it to be processed first for it to be able to be proceed to the next stage of operation. Okay, what is that process called? So that process called, is called signal conditioning. So signal conditioning refers to operation performance form on the signals to convert them to us for interfacing with other elements in the process control loop. So notice this word process control loop. So this one refers back to the chapter one in where you studied about the general block diagram. Okay, so you need to process on each of the of all of the steps in the block diagram. Okay, so what happened to the raw data? So this, the raw data is actually a signal. So that signal may be too small. Okay, if it's too small, then it has to be amplified. It also may contain contains interference. So that interference has to be removed. Also, it can be non-linear. Okay, so it requires linearization. And then it might be in analog form, have to make it into digital form. And also, in vice versa, it can be in digital form in which you have to change it into the analog form. Okay, so for this subchapter, so you have five general types of signal conditioning. Okay, first, signal level and bias changes. Second, linearization. Third, conversion. Fourth, filtering and impedance matching. And lastly, concept of loading. So we are going to cover all of these types of uh, raw data that you need to change okay you need to signal them and uh, you need to uh, condition them for it to be able to be processed for the next stage of operation all right for the first type of signal conditioning is called signal level and bias changes okay so often these two will work together to solve the signal conditioning right okay so it involves the process of adjusting the level or adjusting the magnitude of the signal and biasing okay so biasing means that it has to start from zero value of some voltage representing a process variable okay for example a sensor output may vary from 0.2 voltage to only 0.6 voltage but the output of your project needs to be in the range of 0 to 5 voltage so you need to change it from this level to 0 to uh, zero, uh, 0 to 5 voltage okay for example like this okay say that you have a sensor that detects okay the minimum detection level is 0 0.2 voltage and the maximum is 0 0.6 voltage okay so this is your sensor okay so your sensor will not add 
act by itself, right? It will go to the next step. Or, okay, for example, an actuator. Okay, and then say that the actuator will be displayed on an oscilloscope. Right, so this oscilloscope will accept range only from 0 voltage to 5 voltage. Means that it can only display something that is between 0 to 5 voltage. If your input is 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 level only, so it will not display anything on the oscilloscope since it only can detect 0 to 5 voltage. Okay, so this is what you need to do to the signal is the signal level and bias changes. Alright, the first step is you need to change the 0 0.2 voltage to 0 0.6 voltage into starting level which which is zero so this is what we call as uh, biasing okay so the first step is biasing so what you need to do is just subtract the initial value the minimal value of your input signal from the sensor which is 0 0.2 so how you want to get it to zero voltage so we just need to subtract it so the difference will be 0 0.2 Okay, so if the minimum input will be 0, then the maximum input, you need to minus it with also 0 0.2. So 0 0.6 minus with 0 0.2, then you will get 0 0.4. Okay, so this is the first step. We call it as zero shifting or bias adjustment. So it just means that you need to make sure the sensor starts from 0. Okay. Okay, see then after that, it's the, the output is still not uh, achieved the intended output, the real output voltage of the oscilloscope, which is 0 to 5 voltage. So only doing the zero shifting or biasing is not enough. So what you need to do is, you need to do the second step, which is amplification. Okay, so amplification is this one, signal level. Okay, signal level is... What we said before is to adjust the level of the signal, the magnitude. So it could be higher or lower than the intended voltage. Okay, if you want to amplify the signal, okay, for the previous example like this one, 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 to 0 to 0 0.4. Okay, so it means that you need to amplify the value because the maximum value shows here is 5, right? So you need to amplify the 0 0.4 to 5 voltage. Okay, so if you need to amplify the signal, that process is called amplification. Okay, that is the signal level for amplification. But you can also face a, a condition that you need to lower the magnitude. Okay, so if you want to lower the magnitude, that process is called attenuation. So there's a difference between these two we need to know. Right, so for this example, you need to know to do the amplification. So what you need to do is, you need to times with 12.5. Okay, so 0 times with 12.5, you will get 0. Then 0 0.4 times with 12.5, you will get 5 voltage. So now this is the result of the both of the signal level and bias changes that you have done on the original signal right okay the circuit that performs amplification and attenuation is called amplifier and attenuator respectively so depending on the objective of your circuit okay if you want to increase the value then it's amplifier if you want to decrease the value then it's attenuator right right so we have finished for the first one signal level and by changes now let me now take a look at the linearization Okay, what is linearization? Okay, it's a process of converting a non-linear signal to a linear signal using a special linearization circuit. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture here. Okay, so it's, uh, say that you have a signal like this. Okay, so the input is C mini, uh, the minimum input is C minimum and the maximum is C maximum. Okay, so you have a different shape of the signals here. Okay, what you want to do in the linearization circuit is to convert this uh, shape of signal to a 
signal that is appropriate for signal conditioning on the next spot. Okay. Meaning that the input should be directly proportional to the output. Right. The purpose of linearization is to provide an output that varies linearly with some variable even if the sensor output does not. Okay, since linearization circuit is difficult to design and usually operate only within narrow limits, current approach is performed by using software. So actually in the real life, you have two options to create the linearization. First by using the electronic or uh, hardware part and you can also use software okay so for for simplification it is usually done by uh, using software okay okay next is conversion right conversion is a process of converting one type of electrical variation into another so it could be uh, resistance changes it could be inductance or it could also be Capacitance. Okay, most sensor cases okay, who are dealing with signal conditioning, so the output of the sensor will be processed, right? Most sensor exhibit changes of resistance with change in dynamic variable such as RTD and thermistor. Okay, so take note the RTD and thermistor are both the sensor to detect heat changes, right? Okay, so can you imagine how your circuit actually detects? detects heat changes from the, the sensor. Okay, so what happened actually is if uh, your sensor, your temperature sensor detects changes in, re in heat by the changes of resistance. Your circuit actually cannot detect the heat only by itself. Okay, so it has to be converted into an appropriate electrical readings. Then only you can process the input. Okay, so how to do that? It is necessary to provide a circuit to convert the resistance changes detected by the heat changes, for the example, either to a voltage or current reading. Okay, only these two will be used uh, on the next level of processing of the signal. Right, in signal transmission, okay, this is another example. In signal transmission, for example, it needs to transmit a signal okay by uh, going through a wire okay what happens through that signal transmission is say that you have a transmitter here which only outputs a signal in the form of a voltage okay so this voltage signal needs to be sent to a, a receiving end of your signal transmitter okay in voltage form but in uh, when transmitting the signal it cannot be transmitted in the form of voltage it has to be in the form of current so what happened here is you need to change from voltage to current and also from current to voltage back before you can get the full transmission of the signal so this is also where transmission uh, conversion will be applied. So first conversion will be happen here and the second conversion here. Okay. Another example of conversion also happens when you are dealing with digital signal. Okay. So the use of computer in process control requires conversion of analog signal to digital and also vice versa from digital to analog signal. Okay. So this are uh, three examples of the conversion that's taking place in your electrical circuit, right? Okay, next signal conditioning is filtering and impedance matching. Filters are used to eliminate unwanted signal in the process control loop. Okay, so there are several types of filter available. Okay, two commonly used is passive filter and also active filter okay so this type of filter will be covered on the next objective okay we'll be discussing it more later all right finally is concept of loading okay so concept of loading so what is concept of loading okay so it is one of the most important concerns in signal conditioning is 
the loading of one circuit by another. Okay, so what it means that, for example, take a look at this feature. Okay, so this is your sensor. So do you still remember what is connected to the sensor in your block diagram? It is connected on both sides, right? So it is connected to the input and also it is connected to the output. So what it means that between all of the components on your plot diagram, it actually represents a connecting of loading in between of those different block diagram. Okay, so for example, so this is your block diagram. So remember, it is connected to the input. You have the controller, you have the processor, you have the actuator, and you have the output. Okay, so each time the circuit is connected to each other, so it will load itself to the next circuit. So it means that, for example, this is the sensor. The sensor will load to the input circuit. And then the input circuit then will load itself on the uh, controller circuit. Controller and then will be loading on the next and it will continue until uh, end of the output, until the process stops. So what it means that each time this happens, the, the loading happens in between of these steps, the voltage will be dropped as a result of loading of the each of this part. For example, again, okay, if you have an input voltage like this, so V in equal to 10 volt, for example. If you let it just uh, be by itself, okay, the voltage will stay, the voltage in the loop will only stay at 10. Okay, but if your circuit is connected to another circuit here, Okay, so for example, this is now we call it as voltage output. So what happened is the voltage output will be supplying on another circuit here. Okay, so this second circuit will be loading on the first circuit. So what happened here? You do you think you can uh, can guess the between the difference between VO and also V in? Right, so usually, usually the V out will be much lower than the voltage input. This is what we call it as voltage drop. So what it says here that each uh, each time your circuit is loaded to another circuit, then voltage will be dropped. Right. Alright, so how do you want to to know the value of the loading? Okay, so the loading concept can be described by using Thevenin equivalent circuit. So I'm sure you have already heard this before. Okay, the output voltage is given by Vy equal to Vx times width 1 minus Rx over Rl plus Rx. Okay, so this is basically uh, is the voltage divider of this circuit. So you get to calculate Vy. So if you use your VDR, VDR knowledge, Vy equal to uh, Rx over, so this is actually RL, eh? I need you to change this one. So RL divided by Rx plus width, RL times width, Vx. Okay, so change it into RL. So this is actually Vy equal to RL over uh, Rx plus RL times width, Vx. Okay, it's just a normal VDR. Okay, so this circuit, uh, this equation is actually the same as this equation, right? Okay, the voltage that appears across the load is reduced by the voltage drop across the internal resistance. Okay, so internal resistance is Rx. Okay, so finish on the five types of signal conditioning that you can do on the original uh, measurement or the signal that is detected by your sensor, right?